Hi, welcome back to my channel, Jabber Time. Uh, this is my second video for college algebra. I'm gonna go over exponents and the scientific notations, and of course, I have examples as usual. Uh, probably if you were here the first time, you notice that my videos are lectures with examples. They're not just examples. I do have enough slides this time, so it's gonna maybe run like half an hour for this video. So let's get into it. On uh, exponents and powers and power rules, we're gonna slow down and take it one by one. And here's the first one. The product <coughs> rule of exponents for any real number A and natural numbers M and N, we have the following a to the power m times a to the power n will be a to the power m plus n. So we're going to add the exponents. If you want to follow the rule, you add 2 and 3 because I have the same base. That's called a. In my example, it's 6. You add 2 and 3 and it becomes 5. Now, sometimes students, they mix up between adding the exponents or multiplying the exponents. Well, for me, if I make a connection, as I mentioned in the previous video, between natural numbers and whole numbers, whole numbers has a zero and the word whole has kind of like a zero in it. Here, to help you understand and avoid mistakes, I'm looking at it this way. Take a look. This is 6 to the second, two sixes, 6 to the third next to it, three of them. A total of 5. So yes, that supports that I need to add the exponents. I have 2 and 3 more as a product of factors. I need to combine them and add the exponents. Hopefully that helps. Let's take some examples, quick ones. Uh, because this is like more practice and I want to expose you to more examples, I'm not taking it one by one. But if you feel like I'm going too fast, you could stop the video, uh, hit the space bar, and hit the space bar again, it will play again. Here we go. Add 5 and 3, that's 8, since we have the same base. This is to the power 1, it's not written. We agree on it. 5 and 1 is 6. Now negative 3 to the power 6 is not going to end up positive, so it would be better to write it as 3 to the power 6, all right? Because this, the natives going to cancel. An even number of natives in product will change to positive. b to the second times b to the six times b to the third. You could add 2 and 6, which is 8, 8 and 3, which is 11. <coughs> Let's take another rule. The quotient rule. We need to divide powers with the same base. You subtract the exponents. In the previous slide, we were adding. So in product rule, we add the exponents. In quotient rule, we subtract exponents. This is a support. If you're going to do the shortcut and follow the rule, same base, 7 minus 5 will give you 2. That's how you want to apply this. But let me show you another way. Now, you don't have to write it this way, but it's good to see it or visualize that what's happening is I have seven sixes on top, five sixes at the bottom side. So if I start simplifying, I end up with two on top because I have two more here compared to here. And the answer should be six to the second. Another example, negative 2 to the power 14 over negative 2 to the power 9. Just go ahead and subtract 14 minus 9, which is 5. This is the expanded form to understand. But since I have an odd number of products that has a native, my answer should end up native. So make sure you write the native. I, I, you could see that I'm enlarging the size of it because um, I want to emphasize that your answer should be negative. It cannot be positive, all right? 
because sometimes students they write like tiny native sign it doesn't look like, like an even sign or so make sure that you show it that this answer or the output should be native and if you want to evaluate all the way uh, I'm not writing here simplify or evaluate but it's for studying native 32 if you want to calculate this on a calculator I know sometimes students will do that especially if it's not to the fifth it's like something else they end up with mistakes or they come to me in lower math and say like uh, the calculators give me an error or something is not right I say probably because you are using the minus sign when you type on the calculator instead of the negative sign this is negative 2 to the power 5 you start with parentheses on the calculator a negative sign at 2 close parentheses to the power 5 hit enter you should get negative 32 same thing right here if you want to put the minus outside negative outside uh, that's a negative that's not subtract open parentheses to close parentheses to the power 5 you should get negative 32 what do I mean by the calculator and the minus and the negative sign I mean the following this negative sign is the negative sign on the calculator there is two keys on the calculator one that uh, is a subtraction it's about the same size like the plus sign and one is tiny inside small parentheses that's the negative sign this is a subtract sign this is correct this is not right so make sure practice to do it right because sometimes you're able to use calculators you don't want to you don't want to make mistakes even without <coughs> paying attention to the calculator steps right uh here's another thing another tip for you uh, to avoid mistakes the more that you know the more that you're gonna succeed and get higher scores on exams sometimes students they think that native three to the second the native will cancel because I have a power of two well the answer for this one is native nine I could read this slowly differently for you I would say the opposite of three square the opposite of nine this native three to the second does not equal to nine you could try on the calculator you will see it's not gonna give you a nine it's a native nine all right you don't have grouping symbols right here to control the minus and apply the second degree to it this is what i mean right here take a look this negative is loose outside has nothing to deal with the square it's gonna stay in your way this means the opposite of 3 square, the opposite of 3 times 3, which is negative 9. Where this one means negative 3 times negative 3, and that's a 9. Just make a note out of it and be careful. The power rule of exponents. a to the power m, everything raised to n, you now not add or subtract you multiply the exponents so if you want to apply this right here straightforward this is how you do it 5 to the power 2 to the power 3 you multiply m which is 2 times n which is 3 2 times 3 is 6 let me support 5 to the second to the third this right here if it's called a and you are cubing it that means you multiply a by itself three times so this package right here to the power three means multiply by itself three times but five to the second is five times five five to the second is five times five five to the second is also five times five so if you do it expanded form how many fives do we have we have six that's in short five to the six so yes you don't add these exponents you don't subtract them you multiply them and you don't have to do it this way i just want to tell you that this repeats three times so you're going to see the two fives three times 
which gives you a 6. Okay, let's do a, some quick practice or examples. I mean, I don't have uh, the answers displayed after because I just want to move on and save you some time, guys. 2 times 7, and we're done. Let's take another one. 5 times 11, so it ends up negative 3 to the power, 55. Here's another rule. Anything, anything raised to the power 0 is 1. Here they say any non uh, zero real number. I'm not too worried about uh, reading everything for you guys. I want to be practical and help you understand every single rule to the best that they can at last time. 5 to the power 0 is 1. You could test that on the calculator. Always, I call the calculators for in classrooms, at least in classrooms, a very good resource or handy tool for teaching and learning. We use most of the time, or at least in my classrooms at the high school, graphing calculators. They're more handy to me than the scientific ones, at least to me. Whenever I show them or convince them about the intersection point or graph or you know factoring, whatever you want to call it, I use the calculator to help support my answers. So that's why I call it. I call it a uh, teaching and learning tool. So if you want to convince yourself that 5 to the power 0 is 1, because some students might say like 0 or 5, they, they might guess. Just type it. Test it. 5 to the power 0 is 1. When students sometimes ask me about the exponent, where is the exponent? Oh, I, I can't find the cubic root. I go like, well, cubic root means to the power one third. How about if we test it? Two times two times two is eight, right? Cubic root of eight should take you back to two. So if you can't find the cubic root, test it. Try eight to the power one third. If it gives you two, that means that is how you do the cubic root. So back to our list of examples. Seven to the power zero is also one. 711, my favorite number. To the power 0 is also 1. Pi to the power 0 is 1. Here they're saying real numbers, but trust me, anything raised to the power 0 is 1. So, without reading this, just do it and follow me. To the power 0 is 1. Now, let's support why a to the power 0 is 1. Well, you know 5 to the 2nd over 5 to the 2nd, it's the same amount, 25 over 25, right? That should be 1, right? Okay. Do you remember a quotient rule that a few slides ago I went over? Let's apply it. Quotient rule says you subtract exponents. So oh, that becomes 5 to the power 2 minus 2. But that's 5 to the power 0. But I know that this much, as it shows right here, should end up 1. Imagine if you do it this way, you get 1, and you do it this way, you get something else. That cannot happen in math. That's one of the beauty about math. You do it uh, as long as you do it with logic and regular uh, concepts of algebra and what you learn from theorems, you should get the same answer. So... That's one way to support that anything raised to the power 0 is 1. Sometimes we have negative exponents, and that's part of our system. So let's handle it. The negative rule of exponents. If n is a natural number, you know what's natural numbers, right? From the previous video, right? The counting numbers. And if you have a natural number like 5, this will read as negative 5. So how do you handle it? You don't multiply A by itself 5 times and go like, oh, negative. No. You bring it down to the denominator or you take the reciprocal and you switch the negative sign to positive sign. That's how you do it. On the other hand, if you are in the denominator and you have a negative exponent, you flip it, take the reciprocal, becomes 
a to the power n over 1, which there is no need to write it over 1, becomes positive n. As an example, 5 to the power negative 2 is 1 over 5 to the power positive 2. So your final answer for this is 1 over 25. Let's take another quick example. x to the third over x to the fifth. If you apply the power, sorry, the negative rule of exponents. First, let's apply the quotient rule. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Now let's apply x to the power negative 2. Apply this right here. Take the reciprocal and make the exponent positive. The negative rule of exponents. Bring it down and change the negative 2 to positive 2. Well, I'm using this now right here, right? Okay, let's go back and use common sense. Expand this. Expand this. How many x's on top? 3. How many x's at the bottom? 5. Cancel 3 from top, 3 from the bottom. You will end up with 2 more at the bottom. And that's exactly what we have. I don't have to do it this way. If I could visualize that this simplifies to 2 x's in the denominator. So I'm done. It's up to you. You don't have to do the steps this way, guys. You don't have to. As long as you could simplify correctly and you know what you're doing, you are fine. I still want to support negative exponents because it's part of our system. And it's actually part of this section because we're going to talk about scientific notation. Everybody knows that 10 to the second means 10 times 10, which is 100. If after this you give this to lower math students, they might think that 10 to the power negative 2 is negative 100. Because if this is 100, this might be negative 100. No, that's not true. 10 to the power negative 2 is 1 over 10 to the second. I'm applying the negative rule of exponents, which is 1 over 100, which is 0 0.01, 100. This is a small number in math. This is a bigger number in math. So whenever you have positive exponents, that means the number is big. When you have negative exponents, that means the number is too small. Okay? Here's another rule. It's called the power of a product rule. For any non-real, non-zero real numbers, A and B, and natural number N, the power of the product A times B becomes A to the power N times B to the power N. It's kind of like you distribute the power or the exponent to both factors. That's not addition. Okay. If it's addition, I cannot do that. XY to the third. If you want to apply the rule, that becomes X to the third times Y to the third, which is down right here. If you want to support and expand, look, that means I'm applying this by itself how many times? Three times. X, Y, X, Y, X, Y rearranging that's called commutative property of multiplication end of the story end up with three x's three y's which is x to the third y to the third so in case if you forgot a rule you could actually build it yourself and see what do you do with the exponent okay so this in summary is x y to the third is the same as x to the third times y to the third. Let's take another rule. The power of a quotient rule of exponent. This is similar to the other one that we just had. Instead of a times b, it's a over b. Applying it straightforward, 3 over 5 to the power 2, that 2 is for both. So it's going to be 3 to the second over 5 to the second, which is 9 over 25. Done. If you want to enhance it, support it, I have the following. 3 to the three over 5 to the power 2 means multiply 3 over 5 times itself. Let's take the parentheses out of our way. 
when we multiply fractions, we multiply across. 3 times 3 on top, 5 times 5 at the bottom, that's a 9, or 3 to the second, that's a 25, or 5 to the second, which agrees on the rule. Now we're going to move on to the scientific notation. Scientific notation. A number is written in scientific notation if it is written in the form a times 10 to the power n, where a is greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. And n is an integer, positive, negative, or 0. I mean, like, doesn't make a difference if you use 0, but let's just keep it that way. Since our number system is base 10, we can use powers of 10 to rewrite very large or very small numbers to make them easier to work with. That's the benefit of scientific notation. So 500, just to get started, I mean, we don't worry too much about writing 500 as scientific, but imagine if it has too many zeros next to it. That's kind of hard to read, okay? So 500, for example, just to get used to the scientific notation, is 5 times 100. That's the meaning of 5 hundreds. But 100 is 10 to the second. And 5 could be written as 5.0. Now this is my A. A is greater than or equal to 1. And less than 10. As long as it's less than 10, and it's a number like 5.3.2.0, uh, 2.1 could be we are following rules of scientific form this could be negative and could be positive integers of course on the other hand point 0.1 or 0 0.1 we read it as one hundredths that's a very small amount compared to 500 any number to the right side of zero a decimal has less value compared to the numbers on the left side of the decimal in our system. So what's 1 over 10? It's 1 over 10 to the power 1. Same thing. Bring this up. We know the native exponent rule becomes native. So what is point 0.1? It's actually 10 to the power negative 1. So if you want to write it as a times x, sorry, a times 10 to the power n, to make it look like scientific notation, that's how I write it. How many of these guys? I just have one. 1 1.0 times 10 to the power negative 1. This is a scientific form. This is a scientific form. This is standard form, standard form. 500, that's 5 times 100. And 0 0.1 means 1 times 1 tenth, because that's a small number. Let's take a bigger number. I look for some clean numbers sometimes to help understand. Look at this. That's not 4. That's not 40. That's not 4 tens. That's not 4 hundreds. It's actually 4 million. That's thousands place filled or moved up all the way to another digit. That's called five, 4 million. 4 times a million. That's a million. Counting zeros, that's a 6. So this in short is 10 to the power 6. As I said earlier, our system is based in. So instead of writing this, I could just write 10 to the power 6. That's the benefit of scientific notation. To make it look good, 4.0, you don't have to, times 10 to the power 6, this is less than 10, greater than or equal to 1, and this is an integer, so we're good, we're done. So whenever you see this, that's a big number. Let's take another big number. If that's 4 million, what do you think the coming number is? That's not 5 million yet. It's actually 4 million and a half. That's one way to say it. 4.5 times a million, which is 4.5 times 10 to the power 6. Or you could move the decimal from here to here because it's supposed to be here. Look how many times you move it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 six places and it will move between four and five to make it a number less than 10 and that should do it let's take some examples 
add the exponent 3 plus 4 which is 7 then multiply the exponent okay 7 has to go in for both since I have 3a and 3a I could before that make this add the exponent 7 and 10 which is 17 then I could apply the 17 to 3 and apply the 17 to a power rules of a power 7 times 10 we multiply just like this one 3 times 4 so I have 70 then I could apply the 70 to 3 and apply the 70 to a the way I applied 17 here to 3 and a one more example x to the second y x to the second y x to the second y so that's like my a the whole thing i could just call it a same everywhere but this one is not clear how many i have but you know i used red here to show you that this is one well i have here a to the power one times a to the power three for the convenience i'm saying a you add the exponents one plus three which is four now you could cancel this and say it's one but because I'm using my lecture as notes and examples detailed, I want to do it differently. Quotient rule, same base, subtract exponents, 4 minus 4 is 0. Anything raised to the power 0 is 1. Yes, this amount is 1. I have 4 of these guys as factors. I have 4 here total, 3 and 1 more. So... That should end up 1. One more example. x to the 4th times x to the 3rd over x to the 5th. I could add the exponents right here. Makes it 7. 7 minus 5. Apply the quotient rule. Which is 2. And we're done. Another quick example. m to the 3rd over m to the 5th will be 3 minus 5. Which is negative 2. Be careful sometimes on exams or quizzes, you might be asked to leave your answers without native exponents. So if you end up with this, you're not done. You need to bring it down to make it positive. Okay. One more example. Negative 3 times t to the third. Negative, I said 3, I think. Negative 5 times 3 to the third negative 5 times t to the third so same base if you call this a if you call this a that's a to the 4 over a to the 8 subtract 4 minus 8 negative 4 if we are asked to leave our answer without negative exponents bring it down and you should be fine one more same base add the exponents 2 plus negative 8 which is negative 6 Bring the whole thing down, take the reciprocal to make it positive 6. Another example, I want to apply this power to A times B as if this is two factors. As you can see, 3 here and 3 here. Negative 2 to the third means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is going to end up negative, not positive, 8. And applying the power rule right here. 3 times 3 should be 9. So the final answer is negative 8, W to the 9th. Another example. Apply the 7 to the 2 factors, as you can see. Multiply here, multiply right here. This has a native, native 2 times 7. Bring it down to make it positive and we're done. One more. Apply the 3 to the top. Apply the 3 to the palm side. Here is a power of a power. Multiply 3 times 11. 4 to the third means 64. 4 times 4 times 4. 11 times 3, which is 33. Final answer. 64 over z to the power 33 and we're done with this problem 
this is p to the one it's not written but we agree on it apply the six to this power apply the six to this power six times three is not uh, sorry i was gonna say nine six times three which is 18 right here and six times one is six and we're done one more apply the 27 top and bottom side one more bring this down bring this down make it positive exponents apply this to the numerator apply this to the denominator one to the third is just one apply this to the product apply to the first and the second comes m to the second to the third n to the second to the third three times two is six three times two is six and we're done with this problem i have a few slides left for scientific notation and standard form here we go converting standard notation to scientific form 24 thousand the decimal has to be here but it's right here it's not shown but we agree on it that's why i'm adding different color to move it to the right place you are moving it four times to the left if you don't remember notes do it i don't like to remember notes as if i could do it myself now here on the notes on the box they go like if you move the decimal to the left write a positive exponent at first i go like when I was a student, I would go like, why you move it left and you write positive? I mean, I, we think about the number line left is native and so on. Anyway, but here's another, another way to understand fully and support that. Yes, it has to be positive. Well, think backwards. 2.4 times 10 to the power 4 is a positive, a big number. So yes, to balance it back, if you move the decimal to the left, you need to bring a positive exponent. That's one way to say it. Take another example. The decimal is right here is not shown. One, two, three, four, five. You're going to move it five times. Becomes 3.15. Now notice this number is less than 10. Notice that this number is less than 10. And that's how we do it. We just leave some sp uh, place for the number on the left of the decimal to make it one point something. Or, or more. So times 10 to the power 5. And if you want to support that, this is the right way to be positive. Here's another way. Take it from here with pencil, as you can see. Understand the meaning. 10 to the power 5 means 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 5 zeros. Which is 100,000. When you apply a number like 3.15 times this huge number with decimal or with zeros, you move the decimal, you enlarge it five places and it takes you back to the original so just to help you and support the answers one more here i have uh the decimal has to move between nine and four but this is a very tiny number if i move the decimal here it becomes 9.4 but i did not have 9.4 so i end up using native exponent to balance it back to support as in pencil one more time 10 to the power negative 4 means 1 over 10 to the power positive 4 and now multiply across by making this over 1 i get 9.4 over uh what is that 10,000. so when you multiply or divide 9.4 by a number like this you name it right it gets smaller so when it gets smaller, that means you move the decimal to the left. Okay, now a quick example. Move it to the right, just like that, and write negative exponent of how many times you move it, moved it to the right. Now this is converting standard. We're gonna convert scientific backwards, other way around. Let's do that. Scientific to standard. This is scientific to standard that's kind of easy when you apply 7.03 times 10 to the power 5 you're going to increase this number by five digits so it ends up this way 
when you apply 8 times 10th power negative 6 by a negative number, you decrease it by 6 digits. So you move the decimal to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. From here to here, you moved 6 places. Using scientific notations, perform the operations and write the answer in scientific notation. This is pretty much the last few slides. When you apply these two scientific notation forms, what you need to do is, I'm using black and green to let you stay focused with me. You multiply 8.14 times 6.5, I got that. You multiply this by this, as you could see. Add exponents, what's negative 7 and 10, same base, that's a 3. So far so good. If you use a calculator to multiply these two, I end up with 52.91. That's not less than 10. So I can't stop right here, because that's not scientific. We work inside this one. The decimal has to be between 5 and 2. By moving it left, you balance it back and right times 10 to the power 1. Now, look at these two. They're underlined with three lines to let you know that I have to work on these two and make it one piece. So I add the 1 and 3 and make it 4, and that should do it. Now here I'm going to use, uh, instead of like last time, I'll show you. This is a product. I'm going to use a quotient now. To use it for quotients, you divide this by this, and you divide this by this. You break it down. You could do that, because everything is times. When it's factors, you could do that. If there's an addition here and subtraction here, no, you cannot do that. Or addition, addition, it doesn't work. Divide this on a calculator, I get 0.125, but that's not less than 1. So this needs to be fixed, which is fixed right there. Move the decimal between 1 and 2. Increase it, balance it back by writing negative 1. That is 8 minus 5, which is 10 to the power 3. And that should do it. Now these two, they have to be combined. 3 and negative 1, add them up. That is 2. And we're done with this. And that should do it for this video. A lot of examples. But I mentioned the rules because, as I said, my videos are not just examples. I like to cover the whole package. Hopefully you appreciate that. I tried my best to go a little bit fast or cover enough material for you. And it takes me a while to write those notes and make them all clear and neat. So I want to ask you for... Uh, just be patient with me. And you're going to have all the videos. Trust me. I have to. I am committed to them. And I will keep going. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.